bom dia mais uma vez a todos. Um, obrigado por, por estarem presentes neste webinar, um, onde vamos falar da Adobe Sign, a ferramenta de assinaturas digitais da Adobe, é uma ferramenta bastante útil para a situação em que vivemos agora, situações de confinamento e teletrabalho, e pode ser bastante útil. Uh, vamos ter aqui para, para apresentar dois especialistas da Adobe, o Bart e o, e o Sven, que com certeza vão fazer um ótimo trabalho a demonstrar como esta ferramenta pode ser útil. E, uh, pode modernizar os procedimentos de qualquer empresa. Uh, Bart, I will stop sharing my screen. But thank you very much for helping us uh, with this webinar. Um, uh, the, show you, the show is yours. Cool, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, um, Ricardo. So you're still sharing now? Uh, okay. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for being here. So thank you for the introduction as well, uh, Ricardo. So yeah, so my name is Bart, and I'm going to talk about electronic and digital signatures. So let me just quickly get started here by just deselecting my camera so I can save a little bit of bandwidth here. I'm gonna start sharing my screen, which should look like this. Now, can anyone please confirm that you can share, that you can see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, it's just for you to know, Bart. Um, mm -hmm. The attendees are in mute. Uh, we usually unmute them at the end of the, um, the okay. presentation. They can ask questions in the chat, but for the, for the presentation to go more smoothly. Um, they are in mute now. In the end, we, we give permission to everybody to talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that sounds really good. So um, as Ricardo said, so you are able to ask questions in the chat. And I'm actually accompanied by my coworker, uh, Sven de Groot as well. Sven, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, please do not hesitate to ask questions in, in the chat function during the, the session. I'll try to help you out uh, as far as uh, I understand the question. And uh, otherwise, we can talk about it after the session, perhaps in the Q&A. Thank cool. you. Go ahead, Bart. The floor Thank is you. yours. <laughs> Thank you, Sven. Anyway, so my name is Bart. I'm a principal solution consultant, uh, as is uh, Sven. And so we're going to take the next 40, 45 minutes or so to talk about Adobe Sign and specifically how Adobe Sign integrates with the Microsoft 365 solutions. So uh, with that, let's get started. So when you think about electronic and digital signatures in general, um, then it's important to talk about various aspects. It's important to talk about workflows. It's important to talk about the uh, security aspect of things, the legality of things, and of course, this here, uh, this webinar specifically, we're going to talk about more about Microsoft. So, um, at Adobe, we've already seen a huge adoption of Adobe Sign within numerous of our customers, and these customers have accelerated their business processes by implementing Sign into their day-to-day -day business activities. And we'll see a couple of examples of those in just a couple of slides. Now, it is important to understand that this is a solution that is very scalable as well. So this is not just intended for the very large enterprises that you see here on screen. And because of that, it is basically applicable to basically every aspect of your business process. So going forward here, one of the prime reasons that many of the organizations like yourselves are able to expand the productivity is because historically they've invested very heavily in Microsoft products and services. So I, I will basically ask you the same thing, like, do you use Microsoft solutions? And I'm guessing that like 90% 90, 90 of the cases, you're gonna say, yes, you might be using Outlook for email, or you might be using SharePoint or Dynamics or uh, you know, the classic Word, Excel and PowerPoint. And Adobe Sign integrates with all of these to basically help you streamline that workflow process and build on your prior investment that you've made in Microsoft. And so Adobe Sign is Microsoft's preferred e-signature solution. So, uh, so we're building on that, that basis of trust that you already have with Microsoft because you trust Microsoft. You trust Microsoft services um, and solutions and security. And we're actually building on that foundation. That's something that's really, really important to understand here. And so this here, this scenario or this solution for Adobe Sign in general 
is not just based on the Adobe PDF format. So I'll just quickly take away one misconception and that is that in order to sign a document electronically, you have to create a PDF first. That is not the case. We can just work with native Word, Excel, PowerPoint documents, or even just regular images or emails. So the format does not need to be PDF. Now with that, what is interesting with Adobe Sign is that the integration itself, Sign is the only electronic sign solution that offers compatibility across all three of Microsoft's clouds. So when you implement Adobe Sign into your organization, you'll basically never have to worry about migrating to a different platform or a cloud or solution. If you want to deploy Sign in your organization and you're already using any of Microsoft's cloud environments, you basically already have a, a head start in this. Now, digging deeper into the types of integrations that we have available, as you can see, I, I listed everything that we have right now, and there's a lot going on. So here you can see there's a broad overview of each and every integration that Adobe Sign has to offer. And it is really important to understand that it's not Adobe that built these native connectors, it's Microsoft. So let me repeat that here. So the connectors that you see, so you can see all of the Microsoft solutions and you can see the Adobe uh, logos like the Sign logo and the Creative Cloud logo and Acrobat and a couple of the Experience Cloud products like Experience Manager and Campaign Analytics. The connectors that we have for Document Cloud, so Sign Acrobat, were actually built by the Microsoft team. So what we did is we basically handed over our APIs to the Microsoft team and they built the connectors into their own software. So even the connectors themselves were built with the help of Microsoft. Again, building on that foundation of trust that we have with them. So that's something that's really, really important. Now, again, as I mentioned, this actually covers a very broad spectrum of what Adobe has to offer for a business environment. So it's not just limited to Adobe Sign. This is about Acrobat and cloud services as well. So this could be using mobile applications, using all sorts of PDF services, and everything integrates well in one workflow. So this means that if you already have a system in place where you are combining, let's say Microsoft Power Apps with SharePoint and Dynamics, then well, you will always be able to also use the Adobe solutions within that same workflow, again, which is very, very unique. Because what we have here, and that's something that's really important to, to take away from the session here, is that Adobe Sign is not a standalone solution. It's part of a larger ecosystem. And that is something that's really, really important to understand. For example, over 350 billion PDFs were opened last year using Acrobat, 350 billion PDFs. So that <laughs> there's a lot of PDFs. And so this is an example of how often and, and how well Adobe's Acrobat services or PDF services are also embedded into your daily workflows here. 30% of those 350 billion PDFs were documents that came out of Office 365, 30%, okay? And so this means that there's a massive ecosystem out there that Adobe Sign can basically leverage. Now, if we keep going here and take a look at the specific business processes where Adobe Sign might make a difference, you basically have no limitation. The only thing that I can see on this diagram is the coffee maker. So Adobe Sign does not make coffee for you, I'm sorry. But we do a lot of other things as well. So we do HR, we can help you with your finance departments or IT or whatever. And so these are just some of the basic tasks that Adobe Sign can help you with in your company. And every single business, doesn't matter if you're a one man business or a three man or a 50 or a hundred man business, there is a business process which always requires your name and your signature. So this means that Adobe Sign basically applies to any one of us here because onboarding new staff, offering a contract, sending a quote to a customer for them to sign, sending work with insurance companies or insurance documents, for example, or marketing contracts, release forms or acknowledgements, it could be anything you can use Sign for this. And it's also really important to understand that yes, the service is called Adobe Sign, but you're not limited to signature workflows. What if, for example, you and your organization 
you have a new statement that talks about maybe it's your new car policy within the company. And you want to make sure that all of the 300 employees that you have acknowledge that they have read the updated car policy, but you don't require them to sign the car policy. It's just, just no need for that. You can use Adobe Sign for that. You send a document, you put a document in Adobe Sign. You basically say that you do not wish to request a signature and you can basically say that every recipient is a recipient or, or might also just acknowledge the fact that they've received the document. So these are other things that you can do with Adobe Sign. They're actually really, really important. So look at Adobe Sign as a way of managing agreements, no matter the, the legality or the legal weight that is required for that type of document. There's a difference between acknowledging that, yes, we have an updated car policy and signing an employment contract, for example, or an insurance contract or a sales contract for, for a very large deal, or maybe you're buying real estate. There's a huge difference in legality here. Now, again, just looking at these, these uh, exact same uh, departments here. So well, some of the things you can do here. So we've listed a couple of here with Adobe Sign and or Document Cloud. Uh, and we've added some of the Microsoft solutions in here as well, just to show you what are the things that you can do. Now, if this would be a question, because again, I cannot see the live chat box at the moment. So I'll take a look at that um, during or maybe after the, um, the presentation. Yes, I will share the slides with you. So all this information, you will receive this information as well. So don't worry about copying or taking a million screenshots. This is absolutely fine. Now with that, there's also an integration into Microsoft Power Automate. So for those who are unfamiliar with Power Automate, it's basically a Microsoft web service that enables you to connect other cloud services together, which are not necessarily Microsoft's. So yes, of course, there are a million building blocks in here that deal with Microsoft and Dynamics and SharePoint and OneDrive and, and Teams, but you can even connect your Dropbox with your Google, with your Gmail, for example, or send a push notification to your phone. And there are native Adobe Sign and Adobe Acrobat Power Automate templates and building blocks available within Power Automate in order for you to build custom automated workflows that leverage those solutions as well. Let's take a look at a very practical example here just to get your thought process going. So imagine that you're sending a field service agent to one of your customers. So for example, let's say that you run an IT company and you want this um, person to visit the customer for a repair or an inspection or whatever. This could be anything. I'm just making, I'm just making up a basic scenario here. So the field worker from your company visits the customer site and would create a request order on location using a mobile device, let's say an, an iPad, for example. So they would use power, the Power Apps from Microsoft to create an opportunity from Microsoft Dynamics. Then they would use an Adobe Sign template with Power Automate to start an approval workflow, which will generate an agreement with the customer. So for example, say that we're at the customer location and we're doing an inspection and we notice that a certain maintenance is required for a, a machine or a computer or whatever and say that the maintenance should be scheduled in. So there's a contract that's in place right now, or maybe other spare parts need to be purchased that could all be put in that same agreement. The customer then in person receives that agreement and approves the order on the iPad. When that is done, the final agreement is, set, is sent back to your organization, which triggers a workflow to save that opportunity back into Dynamics and it will process the order for you. So that's the thing. You do not have to work with forms that you sign off on, collect manual signatures, process the information, input that manually. You don't need those things. Everything's already connected to your current workflows here. We actually have a lot of insight into many of the processes that customers tend to use. And so what we've measured is that the average time an employee needs in order to have a paper document signed is 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would I require 18 minutes to just sign a document? Well, 
it's more than that. Signing the document takes a couple of seconds. We do realize this, but someone has to look up the document. Someone has to print the document. Someone has to send the document, read the document, make sure you don't miss any of the required information, fields, dates, names, and other details, sign it, give it back, scan it, process the information, and then file the original paper document. The average time is 18 minutes. This is still ridiculous in the time that we live in today. So this is something where we can hugely win on if it's not just gonna be the regular price of stamps and paper or printing ink, it's going to be, of course, the work time that we spend working on these types of agreements and files. Now let's try to take a look at just a couple of reasons why customers want to use something like Adobe Sign. I'm not gonna cover every single thing here because I do want to um, take a few minutes to talk about security and legality for a second here, okay? Now, first of all, when it comes to trust, Adobe invented PDF. We basically invented many of these digital document workflows. So trust, I hope that we have that trust. It is easy to use. I'll show you that in a couple of seconds, in a couple of minutes. And of course, the Microsoft integrations and the broader ecosystem together with the workflow is actually one of the key unique differentiators that we have. And that is that if you're using Microsoft solutions, we're already there. The connector is already there. We just have to use it. With regards to compliance and enterprise ready, I'll talk about that in the next slide because I do want to dive into the security aspect of things because there are still way too many questions about electronic signatures. Of course, the first question is, is an electronic signature legal, yes or no? Well, in order to better answer that question, let's take a step back and let's take a look at what the means are that we have available for signing a document. Now, of course, we can use a standard pen and ink signature, something that we all know. But you have to ask yourself, is this secure, yes or no? And I can only talk to, I can only speak for myself here. For example, um, a couple of months ago, I ordered something online, which is very expensive. And I was due to have that parcel arrive at my doorstep at a certain day and it never came. And I was, of course, I was getting suspicious. So I contacted the sender and they acknowledged that the package was delivered to my doorstep and that I signed for that part, for that package. And they even sent me a picture of the signature. Of course, I didn't know what was going on because I had never received anything. So I opened up the TIFF document, the image file that came with the email and someone signed in my name. So they used my name and they took my parcel. So this was a problem. Now what happened was that the delivery firm delivered my parcel to the wrong house. I actually live in a street that has a very common name and literally two streets further from where I live, there is a street with the same name, but it's, it's very, there's only a, a slight difference in it. And so the delivery man delivered it to the wrong street. So that was the problem. Now, fortunately for me, the person who lives there has had that happen to him several times before. So we know each other. And so he basically contacted me and said, I think I have something that was not meant for me, but it's meant for you. Now, what happened was the delivery person asked for a signature of the recipient. Is now that person signs, just a little scribbled little, little, little thing on the, on the pad, but the person did not ask for an ID. So it was a blind signature. And that is where the problem starts. Now, of course, I know that we all blindly love to follow ink signatures, but what happens if you send someone an employment contract via mail, not email, regular post mail, and that contract is sent back signed? How do you know that the right person signed the contract? You don't. You're not there in person. You have no way of asking for their ID. You just simply don't know. Having an ink signature is not perfect. It really isn't. So what we can do here, for example, with electronic signatures is we can actually take this one step further and say that we can send the document via email to someone else and we can add different security measures that will enable us to 
basically conclude that the recipient is unique and that only the person that we send the document to should be able to open up the document because we attach a pin code to it or we attach a password to it. And of course it has a unique email address. Now that's one level. There's another level because this here is an electronic signature. And believe it or not, but we also have something called digital signatures. And to many people, an e-signature and a digital signature are the same, but they're not far from it. Simply put, an electronic signature refers to any electronic process that indicates acceptance of an agreement or a record. A digital signature uses a very specific method to sign documents electronically by using a certificate-based identification that authenticates the signer's identity. For example, um, I am from Belgium, and I do know that in Portugal, you have something called an electronic identification card. You can use that card to sign documents via Acrobat or Adobe Sign using a digital signature because your government is the supplier of the certificate that verifies your identity. Because first of all, you have the card, and secondly, you know the PIN code to your card. So that's an extra level of security. And of course, Adobe Sign offers um, uh, a compliancy uh, over all three types of signatures here. Now, looking at this, if you build this up from the left to the right, so this is going from um, less secure, which is just basic email verification, to more secure on the right-hand side here. So of course, you can ask these types of, of signatures to anyone. Now, with that, it is important to realize that these types of um, signatures, they are all recognized by the EIDAS law, which is based on the EU. So it's Electronic Identification Electronic Trust Services. And it's really important to understand here that electronic signatures are legal, and then advanced and qualified electronic signatures are also legal. And it's actually the last two categories, the advanced and the qualified, that we consider a digital signature. With the last category, the qualified electronic signature being the signature which requires your smart card reader, your identification card, or what we call a cloud service provider, which will provide that service for you over the cloud, which means that you can just sign using your phone, for example. Now, let me quickly dive into a short demo of how you can send, sign, and track documents by using Microsoft solution here. Now, I have to say, this is a live demo. Okay, so I have a lot of different integrations here. It's a live demo, so what could possibly go wrong? Okay, so we'll see what happens and bear with me here. I'm gonna quickly hide my presentation and let's take a look at a few basic examples. So I'm gonna start out here by just showing you the basic Adobe Sign portal, just to get you guys oriented here. So this is the basic sign interface. So usually if you're not using Microsoft solutions, this is where you would start. So from here, you can just simply say that you want to request signature for a document. You can just add an email address. Uh, I'm just gonna pick this one here, for example. You can give the agreement a name, my contract. You can add a personalized message and then you can drag and drop in your file. Again, I'm gonna be really quick with this because the emphasis, of course, of this presentation is not this interface, it is the Microsoft interface. But I have to show you what the normal interface looks like first for you to recognize the same interface when you use Microsoft. So what happens now is if you go ahead and if you just drag and drop in a document like this, and I just drag and drop in a native Word document, then if you click the next option, it will allow you to preview and add signature fields and other types of information fields here. So again, this is going to be processed. And from the following screen, as you can see, it is now a PDF. So it has converted everything for me. I can now go ahead, I can start placing the form fields I want. For example, I want to have a signature field here and I want to have the name of the signer. Let's say I want the name here. I want to have the date. And when I'm done, I can just hit the send button to get going. Now, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna go back to Adobe Sign and just cancel what I've just done. Now, this is the long way 
But what if you're just using something like Microsoft Word? So say for example, that I'm actually here in Word and I'm still working on this contract. And when the contract is done, I need to send it off to someone else here. Now, a couple of things. Before, I needed to access the Adobe Sign interface. And I needed to, first of all, select the document. And then I needed to manually place all of the form fields in the proper location, which is easy to do, but it is time consuming. So what you can do, for example, is you can place something that we call text tags. So for example, here at the beginning of my contract, I have an accompanying letter that says, dear, and then I have a code. So I basically typed in this code, which says that here for the signer number one, I want the full name of the signer to appear here when he or she signs the document. Then I've got some more text. I've got some more text. We're gonna keep going all the way down. And now at the very bottom, I'm looking for a signature field, the printed name again, and the date of signing. And instead of uploading this document manually and then dragging and dropping these form fields every single time, I'm just going to put in these text tags instead. And once this document is processed, this will be automatically replaced with the actual form fields. Now, just so you know, if you want to learn more about text tagging in your document, we actually have a lot of help pages here like the Adobe Sign text tag guide, which basically shows you every single tag that you can use and you can just copy and paste them over. It's really easy to use, okay? So this will allow you to create these templates offline and then send those templates off to sign. Now, I'm actually ready to start setting this off and have this sign here, but how do I go about this? Well, look at the top here, you can see this. This is Adobe Sign already integrated within Word. So the only thing I have to do is make sure that my document is saved. And then I'm going to choose send for signature, which will trigger Adobe Sign directly within Word. It will automatically attach the Word document that I'm currently working on. And I'm just going to type in the email address. For example, this should go to Millie. And Millie, oh, of course, we have to type in the correct email address. So Millie is now going to be asked to sign the document. I can give a message and say something like Bodea contracts. Hi, hi, Millie, would you mind signing this document, please? There we go. Now, of course, since I know that I will have the correct form fields everywhere, I do not have to preview the document. So I can just hit the continue button to send it off immediately. So that's how quickly we can go. For this demo purpose, I'm going to leave the preview option on just to show you what the result is of what I've just created. So this is going to go into a full screen version of Adobe Sign, even though I'm still within Word, as you can see at the top left corner here. It's going to process the document, convert it to PDF, and as you can see, it clearly added all of the form fields that I required for this document. So you don't even have to manually drag and drop everything here. And from here, I can just hit the send button and now the document has been sent off. There you go. The agreement has been sent off for signature. I'm gonna close that now. Now imagine that I'm still working in Word and I want to know what the status is of the document that was just sent off. Now I'm in Word here, but who says I can't be in a different application? So for example, what if I'm using Microsoft Outlook, for example, and I'm currently within Outlook and from here I can Maybe ask myself, whatever happened to that contract I sent to Millie? I'm not really sure. I can click the agreement status option because as you can see, sign is also integrated within Outlook, for example. And from here, I can see all the contracts I've sent off. And I can see that the last contract was sent off a signature to Millie, but no update yet. So Millie hasn't even opened up the document yet, which will be listed as well. I'm gonna close that for now. So now at least I know where the contract is. So checking up on the status of where the document is and how the recipient has interacted with the document is something very unique to digital workflows. If I were to send a contract to someone by post or just email as a PDF, I have no idea if they received it, if they opened it and if they signed it, because normally if they sign it, they will have to manually send it back well, that is not the case with Adobe Sign. Let's take a look at Millie's email here. So I'm gonna go back in here. 
this is the this is the email that this basically comes in. It is asking me to sign the document. Now, do know that this can all be personalized. So, of course, there's a lot of Adobe branding in here, but you can change the format of this email. And if I realize that, you know, be me being this person right now, that this is not really meant for me to sign, I can always delegate this away to someone else instead. So if I take a look at the document and I'm like, hmm, this is not for me. Maybe my manager should be signing this. I can always delegate that to someone else. And by using the delegate option, everything will be tracked within Adobe Sign as well. So the email address itself of the recipient, in this case, this is going to be Millie, everything is captured in Adobe Sign in order to create an audit report, which I'll show you in just a couple of minutes here. I'll just quickly click review and sign to open up the signing experience. I quickly have to sign out of Adobe Sign because I cannot be the sender and the recipient at the same time. There we go. So this is the experience that Millie's going to get. So I'm first of all greeted with a personalized message. And here at the top right, it says that I have one required field that I need to basically fill out here. Okay. Now I have options on the left hand side as well, where I can choose to decline to sign if I saw an error, or I can delegate that to another signer if that is necessary. Now, for now, I'm going to just hit the next button, which will bring me to the, the first mandatory field, which is, of course, my signature. I'm going to click that, and I'm just going to either draw a signature. I can just say this is going to be something like, like this. This is Millie's signature. I can use an uploaded image of, let's say, a scanned version of my ink or my pen signature, or I can just type in my name as well. Now, don't worry about the visual quality of your signature. Because some people say, that's not my signature. It looks horrible because I cannot sign this properly using a mouse. That is not a problem, okay? It's not the visual quality that counts. It is the, the, the sum of all the information in this entire transaction that will make this signature legal. And I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So for example, I'm gonna just type in my name. My name is Millie. I'm gonna click the apply button for now, which has signed it now. And with that, the date has been filled out. The name has been filled out. And at the top of the document, the name has been filled out as well. So with that, I'm going to click to sign and commit to the document. And now I am finished signing this contract. Now this is one example. Let me show you another example. I'm using Microsoft Teams. So within Teams, for example, you can see that I am basically chatting with myself all the time. And there are a couple of other things I can do. Now, if I'm using Teams, I can directly click Adobe Sign if I wanted to, which will open up the exact same Adobe Sign interface within Teams. Now, I do need to authorize Sign first for the very first time. So I'm just going to log me into the Adobe Sign interface. And as you can see, this is the exact same signing experience that I have before. I can also manage my same agreements just to check on the status of what has just happened in the last couple of minutes. As you can see here, there are a couple of things uh, that have just been done. Look to the completed option. Millie has just signed the contract. And I can actually download the PDF from here as well. Now, what is interesting here is that of course, I can link my SharePoint to Microsoft Teams. So what I can do, for example, is I could, for example, from here, just directly send documents for signing, or I can just open up the exact same file structure by using SharePoint. So here within SharePoint, I can send off multiple documents for signing. Now, for example, imagine that I want my recipient to sign a package of documents. So for example, I have an Excel file with the pricing guide. I need this one. Um, and I actually need the contract and I need the menu to be there as well. So I've just selected a Word document, a PDF and an Excel file. And with that, I need to merge these three together as a PDF first. Now, as I mentioned before, the ecosystem of Adobe within Microsoft is bigger than just sign alone because you can actually use Acrobat and Document Cloud and PDF services as well. So with this selection active, I can click here and use the integrated document cloud functionality and combine files by Adobe. This will prompt me to take a look at the files that I have selected. It's now loading in these files. It's converting them automatically into one PDF. It's just gonna load in the thumbnails, which will take a couple of seconds. Again, 
this is all very live. There we go. So as you can see, this is the catering menu. I can actually click um, any of these files here. I can open these up. I can, for example, change the order of the documents. I can change the order of the pages if I wanted to. Uh, I can close this back again. I actually want the pricing guide to be first, then the menu, and then the contract here. So this actually looks pretty good. With that, I'm gonna give this a name. I'm gonna call this one uh, package. I'll click combine, and this will now merge everything together into one PDF. So again, this is just a PDF service that Adobe offers as part of Document Cloud. Now, with that, I can actually see that this is the final result. This one very big PDF. You can see that I have all the pages in here, and I even have different bookmarks per original file that I had. I'll go back to SharePoint and take a look at this new file. So now there is a packaged PDF file that was just created by using Acrobat within SharePoint. I'm gonna select that PDF, and from here, I'm gonna click the ellipsis option. I'm gonna choose the Adobe Sign integration. As you can see, I have the exact same options available yet again, send for signature, check the agreement status, or I can work on my library templates if I have certain documents that need to be sent off on a regular basis. For example, an employment contract. So with that, I'm gonna choose send for signature, which will open up Adobe Science integration within SharePoint, and we'll show you exactly how that works. Now for this specific scenario, I am going to uh, type in another name. So this is going to be John Demo Adobe this time, not Millie. And so John has to sign this document. Um, the agreement is already in here. I can again, add a name and a message. I can even password protect it. I can set a completion deadline because I know John's a little bit lazy. So today is the fourth. I'm gonna give him two days, which is absolutely fine. Um, he speaks English or he maybe he speaks Portuguese. It's something I can choose as well, which is the automatic language of the confirmation emails that he's getting. And I might actually also set different methods of identifying this person. Now, of course, this is a very timed demo. So I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna choose phone verification. Um, and with that, I could potentially here fill out my own phone number and then receive an SMS message. I'm not gonna do that right now because of course this is all being recorded and publicly posted. So I'm not gonna put my phone number in here for now. But of course this person will then receive an SMS verification code that needs to be entered before he's able to view the document. Now with that, I am going to preview and add the signature fields and then we'll go through the whole signing experience yet again. So the document is now being processed by Adobe Sign which will probably take a couple of seconds. There we go. So this is where we get to the entire document. Now it has detected some form fields in the document. I'm gonna click here and this is automatically gonna place the form fields that it has automatically detected. Now, sometimes it does an amazing job. Sometimes it just sees form fields where there shouldn't be any, which is absolutely fine. So for now, I'm just gonna scroll all the way down and I'm going to add and again, a signature field here. Now, know that if you require this specific document, to have a much higher degree of legality, then you should place a digital signature field instead, which will require the signer to use an extra method of identification for signing the document. So this again could be your Portuguese electronic identification card by using a USB card reader and a free version of Acrobat, or it could be a cloud signature provider which is something that you have to set up before you send the document in order to have your recipients use that service. Again, we have initials, we've got all sorts of date fields, for example, we have um, uh, check boxes and drop down menus. Anyway, there's a lot happening here, but for now, and just for the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna choose signature for now. With that, I am going to click send, and this is now going to be sent off. It says there are detected form fields in the document, not been reviewed, we've highlighted them for your convenience. Okay, I'm gonna review the document. Oh, there you go, I missed two fields that it were placed automatically, but I did not review. There we go, this should be a little bit better. I'm gonna click send, and now it is sent off for signing. Now, of course, if I take a look at, if I take a look at the email I have, so this is John's inbox. Now this time John is requested to sign this document. It is a similar template that we're getting in his inbox. I'm gonna choose review and sign. And so from here, 
I am going to take a look at this document. So the document is now being uh, viewed inside of this web browser. And keep in mind that if I'm not really sure what's happening to that document, from any location I want, for example, my Outlook, which is always open the, the entire day, of course, I can always just click agreement status and I can always see what's up with the agreement. So for example, I can see that the agreement here has been viewed by John. So I can see that he's looking at the document, but he has not signed a document yet. And so again, there is a deadline for John and I can even send him reminders or automatic reminders for having him actually sign this document. So again, you have a lot more control over this than when you do when you want a paper signature instead. I'll quickly go back here. I'll choose start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click this option to sign again, but this time I want to use my mobile device because it just feels easier just to use my phone for this. So I'm just going to try and click on mobile. And again, this is going to ask for a phone number. And then when you enter your phone number and hit send, you will get a text message, which will bring you to a signing page on your phone. And then you just basically scribble your name on your phone. And then it will just put that scribble here into this area. For now, I'm just gonna type my name, John Smith. I'll choose apply. This is the name and I'm gonna click to sign just to have that document in here. Now with that, the agreement has now been signed. I can see clearly inside of something like Outlook or Teams or Word or any type of Microsoft integration that the agreement has now been not just viewed, but also signed by John Smith, which is actually pretty interesting. Now with that, I'm going to go back to Microsoft Teams and um, I'm gonna take a look at my posts here. So what will happen is, I'll go back here to files. What, you, what happens is here, if you take a look at this folder, which is called signed agreements, it has automatically placed the signed agreement within Teams, which is actually very interesting. So what I can do is I can, for example, download the agreement that has just been signed. It is going to open up the agreements like this. And it is going to open this up with an Acrobat. And this is what you have in Acrobat. So it says that it is certified by Adobe Sign, a document cloud solution. And I can actually inspect the signature and the details of that signature here within Acrobat. As you can see, this is a blue bar. It says it's certified. The signature itself looks exactly the way it did when I signed the document. But what is really important to realize here is that if I were to try and edit the document in some way, then this is gonna give me problems. If I take a look at the document permissions now, you'll see that from the security tab that certain things are no longer allowed. So I cannot change the document. I cannot rearrange the pages or leave out a page. I cannot take things out. I cannot comment. This is all not allowed. If I still had a way to manipulate this PDF in any way, after it's been signed, the signature cert certificate here will break and the signature becomes invalid and is no longer a legally signed document. So that is the security that you have. Now with that, if I quickly go back to Teams, I'll go back to post here. Now what happens is um, it will pop up here in just a couple of minutes here, but once I sign a document, I've actually set up a system using Microsoft Power Automate that will automatically trigger a message here within Teams that says the contract agreement name and then the name of the file has been signed. Please check the signed agreements folder. Now, of course you could personalize everything including the file name, but it will automatically post a message in your Teams that says customer John has just signed this agreement. So you will never miss out on the notification. So Again, time is the main thing that you're gonna win here with this type of solution. So what we've done here is we've taken a document that was available within Teams linked to SharePoint. We've then taken a look at those documents here within SharePoint. We've used Adobe Document Cloud's merging capabilities to create a PDF and change the order of the documents. And then we have signed, or sorry, we've sent the document using the integration with Adobe Sign. 
We've then checked the status of the documents in Outlook. The document was signed, the document was approved. And what happened then is that first of all, the signed agreement was automatically placed back into SharePoint and a message was triggered here within Teams. Again, something that you'll see happening here in just, oh, there you go. It just, it just was uh, put in here, it's 1146. This is what do I get? So it's reporting back into Teams right now. So as you can see, this is like a full circle because all the information that is in the agreements can also be extracted. I can even do things as say that one of the fields that I want to add in for John, for the signer, is the name, the surname, the phone number, the address, anything I want. And we can even automatically extract all the information from that form and use that to help populate my contact list in SharePoint. So again, data extraction is also one of the possibilities that you have. And so with that, I think I've given you a broad overview of what you can do when you combine sign together with Microsoft 365 solutions. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for now and I'm gonna take a look and see if there are any specific questions. So there we go. I'm gonna take a look at the, the chat box here and I'm gonna see if there are any questions right now. If you have any questions, now is your chance to do so. If you, um, if you, if your English is not as good as you'd hoped it to be, just ask your question in your own local language, and I'm sure one of the hosts will help me with the translation. Uh, yes, uh, let's just give uh, permissions to talk. Okay, we are leaving now. Um, uh, se tiverem alguma dúvida, basta, basta tirarem o, o unmute e podem colocar a dúvida em inglês ou português e nós iremos traduzir. Uh, okay, uh, Nuno has a, a question in the chat. Um, yes. So Nuno, your question is, is it possible to create an approval workflow? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. So what you can do is, let me just uh, grab a, another, I'm going to quickly share my screen and just to make that clear for you. Share a screen. Let's try this again. There we go. So what you can basically do is there is something within Adobe Sign called the Workflow Builder. And uh, I'm just going to log into my Adobe Sign backend system again, which will only take a couple of seconds. I'm using an app to verify my identity, which will bring me into Sign. There we go. So what you can do is if you take a look at your account settings, there is the possibility here to take a look at workflows. And uh, I'm gonna minimize this just for now here. So with that, you can basically start a brand new workflow where you say that maybe this is the approval, uh, approval workflow, okay? And this is for everyone that's using Adobe Sign and you can add some instructions. And I'm going to go to the next information here. So again, uh, we can add a workflow to this. Uh, we can add a message to this. We can CC people. We can set recipients. Let's say that this first person uh, that I have here should be, uh, let's say an approver. And I'm gonna choose okay. And then when it's approved, this person, uh, there should be someone else here, which for example, oh, let's, let's, change, let's just make him a form filler. So this person fills out information and then it should go to an approver and my approver is someone in my company. I, I'm gonna try and put in another generic email address here for now. There we go. And so you can basically build out that structure as broad as you can by adding multiple people to the same role. So it's a bit like looking at like how your company is, is set up, for example. And now based on that, you can set different email notifications per sender, recipient, the people in CC, the delegators, um, add documents, and even add more input fields. And so with that, there, there are a lot of possibilities here for you to build every, every single flow that you're basically looking at or that you basically would like, would like to build here. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a signer flow. It could be an approval workflow as well. So with that, I'm hoping that answered your question. 
Só para completar aqui esta, esta situação, uh, bom dia. Um, todos estes workflows podem, são gravados, ou seja, nós podemos criar um workflow a dizer compras, uh, assinatura de contrato, uh, processo de adjudicação, do que seja, e, e criamos este workflow uma vez e podemos aplicá-lo, fica como template, e podemos aplicar sempre que, sempre que acharmos conveniente ou que seja necessário. Uh, Bart, uh, just another question in the Q&A. I don't know if you have mm -hmm. to give a brief explanation, but uh, an attendee is asking about the docker sign and adobe sign, the difference. Uh, the, the differences between DocuSign and, yeah, and Adobe, adobe sign. sign. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's, a very, that's a difficult question just to answer in, in, in one, one, one or two minutes. Um, what I suggest we do for that specifically is that we take this question offline and we talk, we, we can maybe sit down and talk about some of the differences, um, but it's actually a little bit based on what you're looking for specifically as well and how you would like to deploy Adobe Sign within your organization. So it's not, I don't want to turn this into a, a feature comparison uh, conversation because the, the conversation is actually a lot broader than, than that. So um, I'm not sure, uh, Pedro or, or, or uh, Ricardo, if you're able to, to get back in touch with that person just to have that conversation. Uh, yes, uh, he's registered as an anonymous okay. in his Q&A, but uh, quem escreveu a pergunta pode, -nos, pode me enviar um e-mail para mim ou para o Pedro e nós vamos, nós sem dúvida esclareceremos qualquer dúvida que tenham entre os dois softwares. Um, ok, tem mais alguém? Tem alguma dúvida? Quer pôr no chat ou perguntar diretamente ao Bart? And I see that Sven, thank you, Sven, has already posted information about how to build workflows using Sign. So for the approval workflows, for example, so please follow the uh, the help pages in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay, it seems like no, no one else has uh, questions. Uh, Bart, your presentation was amazing. Uh, 